How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? Unique New York. New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. <laughs> so, Noah, my boy, keep me honest, as always, it's the truth, man. I'm a late-ass motherfucker. I was late to my own birth, dude. I say it all the time. It just is what it is. But I appreciate the people that still fuck with me anyway. What's going on, man? How are you guys doing? This is Monday, February 7th. The year of our Lord, 2022. Just my two cents. Hope you are keeping well. Got a couple things to talk about today, boys. I'm going to talk about uh, UFC Vegas 47. Also going to preview the main and co-main event of UFC 271. And then we can just talk about whatever. So... Going to settle into the stream, give it a few minutes, see if a few people come up in here, and then we'll get started. Get my thing set up. Dude, I actually did get my banners and stuff set up for the show, so I did a little preparation. It's not really that I'm late. It's just like whatever time I say it is, you just add like 15 minutes on that, or maybe 30 minutes, and then that's your boy. It's an adjustment. It's a time adjustment. But I should have enough charge on these devices to make it for most of the stream. Until intermission, anyway. So, yeah, man, it's Monday, dude. Hope everybody had a good weekend. It's pretty dreary outside, man. It's like it's a little warmer than it was this weekend, but it's still pretty cold, rainy, nasty. Good, uh, good day to... Talk about some shit to uh, do some things around the house. I've done most much of for today, but um, yeah, man. Wanted to do a little stream. I got some crow to eat, dude, but I did pretty good at UFC Vegas 47 with my picks. So talk about that. That'll be the first half, and then I do want to talk about the main, like I said, main and co-main for UFC Vegas or not UFC Vegas, UFC 271. Yeah. I actually have most of my picks made for that, dude. And I've been doing a little bit of tape study. I did some tape study on one of the fights that I, w I hadn't made my mind up on, and I made my pick pretty fucking well. Like, it didn't take me long to make my pick once I started watching tape. But... So, dude, I thought going into UFC Vegas 47, it looked like a pretty damn good card on paper. And I will say, dude, that it pretty much fucking delivered, man. It was a pretty good card. Like, there was, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There were seven finishes out of 13 fights. So more than half the fights were finishes. That usually makes for a pretty good card. Dude. I, I thought, um, I thought it was pretty damn good. Uh, there were a couple real eye opening moments for me and, uh, yeah, I did have to eat some crow, but I did pretty good with my picks. Um, and yeah, dude, like I said, there were, there was a couple moments where I was like, holy shit, man, I did not expect that. Or like, I expected that dude to win, but not like that. Like, holy shit. Um, so, yeah, all in all, I thought it was a pretty damn good call. Like, it, 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 wasn't really, it wasn't really getting a ton of hype, but in my mind, it was pretty damn good on paper. Sometimes those kind of cards don't deliver, but this one actually did.
So I'd like to say I did make my fucking banners for this. Um so let me man, I do kind of want to put um some visuals up, but fuck it, I might do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck around with this. There's nobody in the chat anyway. Let me um let me fuck around with this real quick. Dead air. Sorry for anybody that's watching this back live. I'm trying to fucking. This shit is so weird on your phone. It's a lot easier to do the um, the split screen on the the laptop. Why does it not show the fucking? Oh, this is pissing me off, dude. So I'm not really having technical difficulties. It's more just me being an idiot and not knowing how to fucking add the uh, Fuck, man, how do I do this shit? It's way easier to do this on the laptop with StreamYard. Because I want to put the fucking... What I want to do is just put the uh, put another window up, but it's like it doesn't show the other window when I do the other layout selection. Like, do I just go to fucking... Ah, this is frustrating. Whatever, dude. Fuck that. Fuck it. Um, let me just pull this up. All right, man. So, yeah, I did. Uh, I did. It wasn't like amazing, but considering the first two weeks I had, considering the start I had in 2020, this is a lot better, man. This is this is more uh, more typical of the week I usually have. Um, so yeah, nine and four is a much better than fucking five and five or fucking five and six. So yeah, that's we're definitely trending in the right direction, boys. So yeah, the first fight, man. Let's just get into it. Um, got up in here, baby bro. And just one for the people, man. Shout out to Mr. Arkansas. Shout out to, um, shout out to my dude, Mo MMA. Saw Mo, um, dropped his UFC 271 predictions. I, uh, I listened to that video myself. It's a good one. Go check that out. Well, it's a live stream, but, uh, if you didn't get it live, check out the, uh, Check out the replay, man. It's a good one. So shout out to Mo. Shout out to Mr. Arkansas. Shout out to the community, man. I hope y'all are doing well. See, we got some heads up in here now. Cage My IQ says, all hail Jeff Molina. Yeah, but Jeff Molina is my president. I know that. 
Howdy, Bard. Spinning seal. Do, 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 do. I can't do it like Moyes, man, but that's the idea. You get the gist of it. All right, man. First fight. Um, what's going on, though, boys? Hope y'all are doing well. Um, yeah, so the first fight did not go how I anticipated it going. Like, and I think that I'm not the only one that felt that way, man. I know that I'm not the only one that felt that way. <clears throat> it was pretty shocking. Um, Y'all know what I'm talking about. Let me put the banner up. I mean, that shit was pretty crazy, dude. We've actually seen that, <clears throat> I want to say, more frequently in the last year or two than I've seen um, ever in my life, like ever before. Like, not just the leg breaks, but like, Jamal Hill and Jacare and now fucking Bondar. It's like, what is going on with these dudes and their fucking like bone density and fucking, I don't know, man. It's weird. <clears throat> it's fucking weird. Hold on. Ah, <clears throat> man, I'm still just fucking stuffy, dude. Fucking allergies. Kill me. <clears throat> but yeah, this shit was crazy, man. So, y'all watch the fight. Y'all know what the fuck happened. Fucking, uh, man, the pace of this fight was frenetic, like, from the start, dude. It, it was, it was, it just went haywire from the jump. And, like, Malcolm Gordon is chinny as fuck, but he's a pretty damn good grappler, dude. He's really strong with his wrestling and uh and his jiu-jitsu as well man he was threatening like submission after submission he was like scrambling through all these positions and like he was like one step ahead of bondar now what he said was that he felt bondar's arm tweak when he pulled on the arm bar because bondar had to pull out of the arm bar like three or four times and so it sounded like and it makes sense like that his arm was already kind of compromised. And so when Bondar went to post on his arm, Gordon pretty much just fucking sat on it. Like he was just like, he just tried to crush it. And he did his arm, elbow just fucking popped out. It was gruesome elbow dislocation. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was something to do with the, the submission attempt. I don't know that for sure. How the fuck would I know? I don't know shit about grappling and whatever, but, that's what it looked like when Gordon said all that shit. It made sense. Um, that was fucking crazy though, dude. That was gnar. Like, um, my wife was napping and like had to, uh, had to like catch the, uh, the replay. And yeah, I was like, I just, I had to like, like, don't watch this part. It's fucking nasty, dude. Um, but yeah, man, I did not expect that, dude. I was expecting Bondar to uh, to just go out there and chin Malcolm Gordon, who is shown to be quite chinny uh, in the past. But uh, yeah, man, that's two good wins in a row for Malcolm Gordon. Um, it's going to be real interesting to see who he gets next, dude, because Bondar, you know, he doesn't have a lot of UFC experience, but he was a pretty highly touted prospect, and to just crush him like that i mean they're gonna give him somebody decent so yeah I'll, I'll be i'll be interested to see who it is and like if it's if it's gonna be somebody that uh that has the um the takedown defense to keep it on the feet i'll be i'll be interested to see who they give him next shout out to the four or five people in the chat general parachuting in the building sub general so dude Fucking baby Bondar. Baby Bondar killed my only parlay of the night. Bondar Davis. Bad read. Yeah, it was definitely a bad read on Bondar. Um, seems to happen at 125, the arm stuff. Royval and Bondar, same thing. Oh, yeah, Royval too, man. Royval did have that fucking injury. Which fight was that in? Um, 
the Moreno. I can't, I can't fucking remember, dude. But yeah, I, 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 I remember that now. I remember like Roy Ball screaming. Was it the? Yeah. Raw dog, raw dog, Roy Ball. Here we go. I don't see right here. Yeah, I think it was Moreno. I think it was the Moreno fight. Um. Um, anyway, but yeah, so yeah, that was weird, man. But yeah, like, uh, like Jamal Hill, that one was nasty too. It was similar. It was the same kind of injury. Like what didn't happen from the same thing, but it was the same, like his elbow was like popped out inside. Like it was like protruding out on the, on the inner part of his elbow. <laughs> yeah. Moreno. Yep. 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 Um, so yeah, that one was gnarly, and I was a little bit concerned, man. I was like, wow, we're just off to a great fucking star, aren't we? Like, three weeks in a row, shitty start. Um, but then I rattle off a few a few correct picks, man, and a, and a few really good reads. Um, so, moving on to the next fight. Dude. I mean, I'm not going to flex too hard on this one. Most people are on the right side of this. Like some people try to get greasy with wit, but I mean, Roe had kind of shown this in fights before. Like he's a pretty decent grappler, man. He's definitely has good jujitsu. And I just like that when he does get put in bad positions, he doesn't panic. Uh, he kind of just stays safe and waits for his chance to get back to his feet he usually doesn't take too long either like he's either he's either looking for a submission or he's waiting for the dude to like go to the next position and he just pops up uh but yeah i like uh i like what i've seen from Roe, man uh he's got a little swag to him and uh man on the feet dude if you don't have a good chin or like you don't have good boxing defense homie will light you the fuck up like he he's got he's got good hands, man. Um, I like that uh, that finishing combo, that fucking right hand, left hook, right hand. It was nasty, dude. And uh, I mean, like I said, I'm not gonna flex too hard. It, it did it didn't go down exactly as quick as I thought it would. I had row by first round knockout, like a lot of people did. Um, credit to anybody that had him by second. I know some people have my second round knockout, so anybody that called that, good look. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I knew at some point the the reach disadvantage and the striking disadvantage was gonna was gonna be wit's downfall um so yeah man good good fucking win by phil Rowe. and when wig like and and i did have it like when wig goes down he goes down pretty fucking bad like it's uh it's usually not a situation where he can catch himself and uh he crumpled man if you watch his like left leg just like fucking folded up like a lawn chair dude so yeah, he fucking. Uh, I, that's why I say demolition, dude. Just like he fucking hit the hit the demolition, you know, hit the fucking dynamite, and yeah, just kind of crumbled, crumbled the uh, crumbled buddy. Yeah, so uh, I'll just let me just. This is not a gossip channel, man, but let me just speak real quick on this issue. Uh, there's no beef with Brodan or Chris. I, I never really had any beef. The whole time, I'm pretty just pretty much just reacting to whatever I see. I said my piece. You can go back and look at Arc Stream if you want to know how I feel or what I said. I think I laid it out pretty clearly. Um, but yeah, there's no beef moving forward whatever um so yeah uh interested to see who they give philip Rowe next because wit ah, the writing was kind of on the wall dude like a good sharp striker with a nice straight punch is is wit's kryptonite dude so um yeah, I mean it was a uh, it was a pretty easy read. Simmelsberger did it to him. Sato did it to him. It was it was pretty pretty easy call. Um, now, next fight. 
general judge and jury, Alex Ramirez. Rokeo, my best bet to cash nice. General sentence is Cody Durden to carousel due to racism and jealousy. I mean, you heard it, boys. Sentenced. <clears throat> this fucking tree I have is good, but it's a little rough on the throat. Once again, sorry, my voice sounds like shit. I was screaming at the top of my lungs on Saturday. Fucking this, this, my allergies still bother me. And this tree is uh, a little rough on the throat. It's good though, man. But sometimes the indicas can, can be a little rough. Elbow cough. No, I cough straight into my fucking hand. Biden style. Just <laughs> right on my phone. Just droplets all over the phone. No. Nah. Um, all right. Where are we, boys? Man, this next fight, dude, I I had this guy to win. I figured it would go down. The, I figured he would get a finish, but I didn't think it was going to be like this, dude. Um, let me get the next banner up. Dude, how about fucking Jailton, Jailton Almeida, man? Dude is a fucking beast. I mean... This was honestly a pretty easy pick too, dude. Like, yeah, if if you just look at it immediately on paper, oh, Marquez is a good grappler. Almeida is a good grappler. This should be close in the grappling. Like, yeah, but the more you look at tape, it's like Almeida is so much stronger. He, dude, he's relentless with getting the takedown. Marquez is fighting these fucking jobbers, man. And the ones that aren't jobbers, like he's getting destroyed. Like, like Kennedy's actually a pretty decent prospect himself. So Kennedy just fucking smoked him. And Kennedy's a fucking blue belt on the mat. He couldn't finish in Chuck Wu. So like, I knew he wasn't going to finish Almeida. And Almeida looked like he was better on the feet anyway. But dude, I didn't expect him to just like. I, I thought that Marquez would at least be able to defend himself because he's usually pretty live in the first round. Like he's usually like you know a decent looking fighter in the first round, but. And I thought he would, like, you know, wilt in the second or third. But fuck, dude. Like, Almeida didn't even give him a chance. He just – he basically just, like, Alexander Romanov him. Just, like, started, like, like fucking baby Huey King Kong hammer fisting him. It was fucking pretty tight, dude. It was pretty vicious. Um, and, man, man, if you ain't no good grappler, you are going to get fucking smoked by Almeida. Like, he is going to get you down, and you are going to get fucked up. Um, say what you want about Marquez. He's a pretty trash fighter, but at least he's a good grappler, dude. And he didn't fucking look like it whatsoever. Like, uh, and I've heard some people say I don't think uh, Nazardine Nazardinov is a, like, he's not an amazing fighter, but he's a decent grappler. And, like, dude, even these decent grapplers are just getting smoked. Dude is a dude is fucking big. He's strong as fuck, and he knows what he's doing. So yeah, look the fuck out for Jailton Almeida, for real. Damn, sorry, brother. Sorry about that. Art, art. Live to get fuck. Live to get his fucking ass whoop. Yeah, exactly, dude. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that was, uh, I, I, like I said, initially when I saw it, I was like, hmm, this is tricky. I'm going to have to tape this three minutes into watching tape. Oh, okay, Almeida's got this like a motherfucker. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, all right, all right. Next fight, next fight. Um, hey, your boy called this one too, man. Now, there were some people that were on Stolia Stanko. I'm not, I'm not setting anybody out. I'm not naming any names. Some people were on Stolia Stanko though. And man, like, 
I, I will say this though. I will say this. If this was like a year or two from now, Yulia probably wins it. Like Davis is getting to the end. She's so easy to hit. And like Yulia is really not that good of a striker. Like Yulia is one of those fighters where people like, people kind of like wiki cap her and dude i'm i'm a wiki capper myself I, I would consider myself you know more of a wiki capper um not really i mean i do watch I'm, i can be a wiki capper at times i'll say that i can be a wiki capper this is one that a lot of people wiki cap um because they're like oh well julia julia has a lot of arm bars and she did left way, so she's got to be a decent striker, right? And Alexis, you know, and she did. She lit Alexis up because Alexis is incredibly like Alexis is a punching bag, man. She's she's a punching bag that punches back. Um, it's it's literally like a punching bag that has like two arms coming out of the side that just hits you back. Um, so yeah, it was closer than it probably like now conversely or inversely i don't know which i don't i don't know which one it would be i'm gonna say conversely conversely if this was five years ago davis would fucking smoke her like you know what i mean so yeah dave i, I was pretty sure davis was the better fighter she showed herself to be the better fighter the better i mean alexis is a black belt dude like she i was pretty fucking certain she wasn't gonna get subbed it did look hairy a couple times because like Stoli Ranko has a good arm bar. She's she's super dangerous from a guard, but that is all she fucking has, dude. Like that is her entire fucking game. Make it ugly on the feet, crash into you, and get a fucking even if she gets taken down, get the fucking submission from guard. But like if that doesn't work, if you're fighting another seasoned grappler, especially one that's like strong and like can can uses like good like top pressure, or whatever is like a heavy like wrestler kind of grappler like alexis davis um yeah i was pretty sure that alexis was gonna be able to survive and she looked good on the ground man like she just kind of handled her um handled her i won't say she handled her she handled her business so yeah um she got it done closer fight than it needed to be stoli ranko is kind of she's kind of trash man like if that's not you know what i mean like if that's if alexis wasn't so old she would have crushed her like and anyone if they give if they were to give her anyone like above Alexis, dude, it wouldn't go good. Like, even if she, let's say she fucking subbed Alexis Davis, they would give her someone better and she'd get fucking crushed. You know what I mean? So it's like, eh, I don't really know what you do with Stanko, but yeah, congrats to Alexis Davis. I don't really, I don't really know what you do with Davis either because like, who the fuck are you going to give her? You know, that's not going to, it's not just going to piece her up and knock her out, but I don't know, man. Davis is tough. Uh, I like Alexis Davis. She's been around for a while. Um, she seems like a, uh, a decent person you know what i mean she seems like a a decent person that just likes to fight and uh she's been around for a while so i, I definitely have some respect for her she got the job done like i thought she would let's move on yeah he smashed dude dude get the fuck out of here man i mean alexis davis clearly won well like the, i got i didn't even i watched it once like what like the first and the third Still, still, st or st I can't remember, dude. I can't remember, but I remember having it 29 28 Davis. I can't remember which round, two rounds I gave her, but I'm pretty sure I, I know I gave her the third, and I can't remember which other one I gave her. Yeah, that was kind of bullshit, man. Like, how do you, and I love Bisbing, but sometimes his commentary really pisses me off. How do you say that's not intentional? How do you say it's not intentional? Let me tell you real quick. Let me, I, I, I know I'm going to go off on a tangent here, but I just want to real quick because the name of the, the name of this channel is just my two cents. I literally just give my two cents on fucking everything. This is my two cents on this bullshit. There should be up kicks and there should be soccer kicks. You should be able to kick someone in the face when they're on the ground and you should be able to up kick somebody even if they're on their fucking knees. I just, I just think you should be able to, man. But, you know, I understand the reasons for not. But, dude, because they're like, well, this could danger the person's neck. Mm, so can getting fucking suplex on your head. So can getting fucking uh, a shin to your neck, um, an elbow to the back of the head, you know, or to the side. You know what I mean? Like, 
kind of just the most dangerous shit happens anyway. It's legal. I don't see why those two techniques are legal. I think that all that shit, I think you should be able to knee somebody when they're on their knees. I should think you'd be able to kick somebody when they're on their, when they're on their, uh, if they're just laying there, I think you should be able to just fucking ax kick them in the face. And I think that you should be able to up, up kick somebody if they're just like sitting there trying to like play games and they're not fucking passing guard. You know what I'm saying? I just, I feel like these techniques should be there, but you know, maybe I'm wrong. Stanko Unchained. John Lennon sends Julia Art. I think it's a no cut. Yeah. You can buy a legal up kick. Happened recently in another WMA fight. Damn, son. Sup, Russian bot? Man, bots love your boy. I'm telling you, dude. The Russians fuck with your boy. I don't know what it is. They heard me make that fucking Biden joke and they came a running. <laughs> yeah. Nah, oh, man, I'm super non-political now. Fuck the Republicans and the Democrats. They're all fucking grifting scumbags. Probably never vote in another national election, ever. Probably won't vote in another state election, either. Local is the only thing I can see myself really contributing to politically, but other than that, I just, I don't fuck with it. All right, next fight. Um... But yeah, man, I was on a little roll, got three in a row right, and then we hit a big old crow-based roadblock. Exactly, dude. I think Max said it best. The Republican who's going to blast me in the ass or the Democrat who's blasting me in the ass? Someone is going to, one of them is going to blast you in the ass. You know what I'm saying? And that's not good. No one wants to get blasted in the ass. Unless they, they just like that. That's fine. But nah, man. If you don't want to get blasted in the ass, don't get into politics. One of them's going to blast you. You will get blasted. You get blasted in the mouth. Um, all righty. Speaking of that, man, I need to finish. I think I'll watch. We, me, and, me and the old lady watched like the first couple episodes of the most recent season of Sunny. Remember thinking it was pretty decent and just never finished it. I started watching the first. I so I watched. <laughs> I watched like the first half of the first episode of MacGruber. It's absurd. It's been hit and miss. The hits are really fucking funny, and some of it's just really fucking silly. I don't know, man. It's. I'll probably watch it here and there. I'm a big MacGruber fan, though. I was MacGruber for Halloween a few years back. The second episode of the newest season was the best. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I give Sonny credit because for a show that kept going and kept going and kept going, usually those fall off really steeply. It managed to stay decent up and you know, up until now. You know what I'm saying? Like the, there weren't too many seasons where I was just like, this one was fucking horrible. Like I can usually find at least two or three episodes. Then I'm like, yeah, those are pretty good. Um, but it's it has been consistently like less and less. But that just happens with every show, man. Like, yeah, I would but I'd say like the first eight seasons of Sunny, the first seven are locked down, airtight, gold, some of the best comedy on television ever. Ever. One through seven, solid fucking gold. I would say, or platinum, solid fucking platinum. I would say eight and nine, eight, nine, ten are like gold, and the rest are, you know, they're 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 still hits, but that's kind of how I feel about it. Um, all right, next fight, man. Cause I gotta eat some crow here, boys. Um, this one was bad, dude. This one, because this is bad for a couple of reasons. Dude, chitty chitty fucking bang bangs, Mark Andre, dude. And it was uh, it was a tough one, man, because I was feeling very confident about Barrio. This car was weird in the sense that, like, I picked three underdogs and I hit two of them. But 
the picks that I was most confident about, uh, they, they just they either got fucked up and finished, or they barely won. So, yeah, yeah, Mark Andre Barrio. I got to eat a lot of. I mean, and this is the t- this was the fucking the nastiest fucking least dead still kind of alive like fucking bony tendony still feathers and a little bit of beak piece of crow i have to fucking eat dude it was <laughs> yeah man uh i was i was on mark andre barrio heavy i thought i was being real fucking clever you know picking him and so I said, everybody's gonna be on cheaty dude and i was like nah dude i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm show them all right Nah, you fucking idiot. Like, dude, 16 seconds, man. And, dude, there was some other dude. I was just watching tape on it. Some, the, when, and, and I'm, I'm going to sound like such a douchebag because I would probably, dude, if I was, I'd probably do the same shit in my first fight or something. Like, if you throw a naked leg kick, you're just rolling the dice, especially in the UFC. You throw a naked leg kick in the UFC, you're fucking rolling the dice, especially against a really fucking good striker. Uh, you're going to get your clock clean. And that's exactly what fucking happened, man. Chidi, I mean, and it's not just that you are rolling the dice and that's a dangerous thing to do. Chidi's got power, man. Like, Barrio's tough, dude. He's all, he's only been knocked out maybe like one time, and like he's shown himself to be a tough dude. And to just one punch him like that, like I mean, it wasn't technically one punch, but he never recovered, man, from that first shot. And the follow up shots were vicious. I think he was out. I think he got knocked out like at one point. Um, he was just slumped over, dude. It was it was a brutal knockout. Um, Chidi's for real, man. Chidi, um, he actually, I think, holds the Guinness Book record for having the deepest human voice. Like, I couldn't even like imitate his voice if I tried. He like, it's like. <sighs> I, I can't even do it dude he he has the deepest human voice ever it's crazy uh but his dude his power is insane um yeah i mean mark andre is tough dude there's there's some other guys that it, that that aren't so tough who who buddy they they got uh they got something real special coming if they fight him dude so yeah, that was an eye opener, man. This one was a big eye eye opener for me. Um, Chidi's the real deal. I mean, I just, dude, because Barrio's a tough guy, man, and he he has a winning record in the UFC. I think I'm pretty sure he might not now. Um, I know he beat Dolce. He beat, um, knocked out Abu, knocked out Pahoda. Yeah, I mean now he's. No, I mean, he has a losing record now because the Pahoda got changed to a no contest because um, he did pop, man. He did uh, he did pop for dope. Um, but, yeah, man, he he hadn't been knocked out in the UFC. And, no, nah, he had never been knocked out in his pro career before that. So, yeah, man, big, big eye-opener. Um, yeah. Mamma mia, what a knockout. What a debut. Fucking cheaty, man. Holy shit. Little bitch ass baby ho. Yeah, exactly, dude. Duck, duck, seal. That fucking seal, man. Shout out to BP, man, wherever you are. Stop looking at me, Swan. Um, 
Um, all right, where are we at, boys? Where are we fucking at here? Boom. Yeah, man, I pretty much called this one to a T. Went down how I thought it would. I knew Trezano was tough and that Hakeem probably wouldn't knock him out, but I kind of figured he would get the better of it on the feet. I'll tell you what, though, man. Hakeem looked even better than I thought he would. Like, I got to go back and watch, but I thought he won every round. I had it, I think, pretty sure I had it 30 27. Hakeem maybe 29 28, but I'm trying to think, man. I might have, I might have scored every round for Hakeem. Um, yeah, dude. He's got some – Trezano is tough. Trezano is really tough. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Hakeem knock some more people out because um, Trezano had to eat some really clean shots, and he he just fucking ate them. Uh, but, yeah, he was getting lit up. Um, Hakeem out-volumed him, uh, chopped the fucking tree with those leg kicks, and um, threw well in combination. Yeah, Hakeem looked really good. He fucking styled on him like I thought he would. So, yeah. Your your boy saw centuries into the future with that one. Is that a sloth? Yeah, he looked like I, I thought it would look something like a semblance of that, but dude, he he was yeah, it was impressive even even more so than I thought. Yeah. On Trezano, he got whoop. Holla, holla, Mary. Dude. Um, cause I've never been super duper high on Trezano, but he has a good record, man. He what he did win the ultimate fighter. So at the very least, he's a decent fighter. I, I he's he hasn't really fought the craziest level of competition, but he's been mostly winning. So that's a decent win for Hakeem and, and to uh to just put a whooping on a dude like that um yeah impressive because i mean it stayed on the feet most of the time so um but i did like that uh the fight iq from hakeem um he didn't like do anything stupid um and get caught in a sub or anything but when he did get hurt he did clinch up and give himself time to recover and uh and made the most out of the clinches too like he usually was landing good strikes off the breaks and shit um Hakeem led the dance every time Trezano countered. Hakeem would, would always finish last. Yeah, exactly. He was first and third. I'm telling you. Started first and finished last. That's what you're supposed to do. You either have to be first and third or second and fourth. If you're the one countering, you have to counter the counter of the counter. So to speak. I always liked that. I hated waiting. I hated waiting, dude. I always I always tried my best to draw out the counter and then counter that. I hated fucking waiting. I was I was very impatient. Um this this is just a sparring. Um, but yeah, I hated that shit. So yeah, first and third. First and third. Unless you have the one hitter quitter with your counter. First and third or second and fourth. Man, yeah, Hakeem looked good as shit, dude. Okay, man. Now, this is the one, dude. This is the fight that had me losing my shit. And I got to say, your boy fucking called this one. And I I am going to take a little time to gloat and do a little flexing. Dude. So, like I said, my wife took a nap because um, she wanted to rest up for the, uh, for the Arkansas game. 
it was uh it was on uh Saturday night and we did beat them fucking bulldogs. Go fucking hogs, woo pig. Um but uh yeah, so she was napping, dude. She was dead asleep. And Castaneda chokes out Miles Johns. He was out, dude. And uh, I was screaming at the top of my lungs. This is, this is what I screamed at the top of my lungs right there. Sexy Maxi, people are make. Like, dude, I was so fucking hyped, dude. Um, yeah, and I woke her up and she was fucking pissing me, dude. Uh, so yeah, it was ended up, um, you know, I ended up getting a little shit about that, but it was worth it, dude. It was worth it. I was, man, I'm so glad I stuck with Castaneda because I almost switched my pick. This was the pick that I was closest to switching. Um, originally, this because this was my my first instinct. And that's why I've all, I always tell people when they pick fights, pick with your fucking first instinct, man. You, there is not a worse feeling than changing your pick, being unsure of yourself, changing the pick, and then having that be wrong. Because you, it's easier to learn from the from the mistakes and to just correct it and it's easier to like be like okay i just got that one wrong but if you had it right and then you switch it because you're unsure of yourself that fucks with your head and that's why i don't do that shit and this is yet another fucking example of why i always say trust your fucking gut when you pick these fights dude my personal opinion that's just my two cents on it. But yeah, I mean, sexy Mexi dude. I knew he was tough. Uh, I knew that he could pressure forward. I knew that he was a good grappler. And I also, and people were calling me crazy, dude. No, I, no, I don't think anybody in here, but like, there's some people in some other chats, dude. They were, dude, they would not get off their knees and stop sucking off Miles Johns. And I was telling people all fucking week, the dude did not look good in these fucking fights. Even the ones that he won, he looked like shit. The dude has horrible body language, horrible posture. He always looks like he's off balance. Even when he like lands, he's just like, he's just a wobbly looking fighter, man. And I don't care what anybody says. The dude has cardio issues. He's gotten himself out of trouble with his power. But I knew that Castaneda was tough and that he was going to be able to eat that shit. I started to doubt myself because I was, I was starting to listen to fucking other people. But then I went back, rewatched the tape, and just stuck with my gut. I'm so glad I did, dude. Because this... This one had me so fucking hyped. So happy for John Castaneda, dude. That guy, man, people were really down on him after that Nathaniel Wood fight. And it's like, nah, man, Nathaniel Wood's actually just a decent fighter. You know what I'm saying? Nathaniel Wood isn't losing to jobbers. He's what, like two and two in the UFC or two and or three and two or something like that. But Nathaniel Wood's a good fighter. Like he's young. Like he's like it and John and Castaneda took that fight on short notice and he hung tough. He's a tough dude, man. He's a good fighter and he's learned from his mistakes. And he told, even told Bisbing that he like Bisbing, he listened to his commentary and he was like, he needs to throw in combination. That's what he did, man. Punches and bunches. Sexy Mexi, baby. And he was a dog, man. He was an underdog. So, yeah. That's what's up. That shit was tight. Yeah, dude, I, I I've done it so many times, and it just it makes me fucking sick. They named the team after the women that walk around down there, Bulldogs. Oh, you like that Mississippi? You like that shit? 
dude yeah we <laughs> dude arkansas we do we got the state of mississippi's number usually there's there's some exceptions and outliers here and there but dude football maybe not all the time in basketball but football dude yeah they're kind of our fucking bitch <laughs> <laughs> not all the time but yeah man like uh, yeah mississippi State. that was i mean it was a good game like they uh they had us they played us close and uh do the rep there was some bullshit going on with the refs and the, the the refs were trying to get them that fucking win but uh nah man we usually do pretty good in bo walton and we close it out man hit a couple fucking dagger threes put it away yeah she was tight um but uh yeah, so that was the prelims. I did pretty good on the prelims. It was five and two. It was the total prelim record. So on to the main card we go, boys. Shout out to the three people in the building. Hanging tough with your boy. Next fight, man. Dude, Juicy J and Ocho Peterson fucking go to war. It's just a check mark because I, Eroso was one of my most confident picks, and I legitimately thought he was just going to smoke this dude. Um, it looked like it was going that way towards the end of the first round, and I, um, I was in the uh, the pub chat for a little bit. Shout out to the uh, the boys and girls over at Pub Sports Radio. But um, I was in there and I said in the chat, I was like, as long as Juicy J doesn't get clipped, Peterson's going down the next round. And what do you fucking know? Arosa gets clipped in the second round. And then it just turns into a fucking war. Like, it was starting to go Juicy J's way. And then he got, he got chin checked a little bit. And it all went out the window and it was just like, okay, it's a war now. It's just, it, it would just turn into rock and sock and robots. And, uh, man, like, uh, dude, shout out to my dude, Jack, man, because like Jack, I had an incredibly tough time picking Julian Rosa fights last year. I was, it was just crow left, right and center, but he had a little resurgence, man. And I, I fuck me. Like I thought Charles Jordan was going to chin him, but, it's like you beat Charles Jordan. I'm not going to pick. I'm not going to like you beat Charles Jordan and probably not going to lose to Jordan to, to uh, Steven Peterson. And he almost fucking did. But it was a crazy fight. It was very entertaining, but it was a sweat, dude. If you picked her better, Rosa, because I know a lot of people did. I, I know I fucking know that a lot of people parlay to Rosa, dude. You can't tell me no different on that one. But, dude. That was a crazy fight. Crazy, bloody. Um, I can't remember exactly how I scored it because I had Peterson winning. The, was it the second round that Arosa caught him with that spinning elbow or that spinning back fist and dropped him? Because I, it might have been the second round because I thought Peterson was winning that round because he had hurt he had hurt Arosa and then Arosa sat him down. So I can't remember. Like that, that's one of those where you probably could have scored the second one a draw. Um, but I remember thinking that Arosa did more in the third round. I thought he won the third in a close, close round, but I thought that Arosa held the center more. They both hurt each other, but I thought that Arosa was landing a little bit more. And I gave the first round of Julian. So yeah, I think I scored it. Either 30-27 or 29-28 Arosa. I really don't get the split. Like, I get it. It was a close fight. But if it was the second round that I'm thinking of that Juicy J dropped him, that's kind of like the Brandon moreno Figueredo thing where it's like, yeah, it's a close round. But if he drops the dude, mm, that kind of seals it. For me, that usually seals it. So I think I might have had a 30-27 Arosa. But I can't really remember. Just too good. But yeah, it was something like it. Oh yeah, dude. He that's that's his instinct. I think that's why he gets chinned a lot, honestly, is because he's just like, fuck this, I'm just gonna swing.
dude. I'll tell you how. Brother Artem. I'll tell you how. You ready? I'm going to type it in the chat. Because that. Because that. Because of that. That's why we watch it, because it's the fucking best sport ever. I don't even bet on the shit, and I get so fucking hyped for it, dude. Like, I get, I get as hyped for it as I do about Arkansas. And that, dude, that, the, that Arkansas shit and rooting for Arkansas, that shit is in my blood. And I get just as hyped for UFC. Um... So yeah, man, it's uh, yeah, it's tight. It's the best sport ever. But um, yeah, that was a crazy ass fight, dude. That was a really fucking crazy fight. Now I forgot to put the banner up for this. God damn it, you fucking idiot! Hold on. Why? Why am I just doing things that I don't need to be doing right now with this fucking? Okay, here we go. Sorry, boys. Shout out to the three, four people in the building. Y'all are the shit. I'm just getting this, uh, getting this little banner ready, dude. Brian, the Pooh Bear battle is the ultimate fighter. Ain't no debates. Ain't no, ah, oh, well, if I was in there, I don't, nope, nope. Brian Battle is the ultimate fighter. He was the best fighter on that fucking season, period, point blank. That's all there is to it, man. Oh, yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Lest I forget. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. The keeping amphibious rodent inside the city. That ain't legal either. Boom. And another one. Your boy fucking call this one, man. It was just, this was just an instinctual pick, dude. I I like what I saw from Battle, man. He's a tough motherfucker. And that's why I picked him. I mean, credit to Gore. Um, he did test Battle for sure. He tested that shit, man. Dropped him a couple times. But I liked that Battle, He's he's got a high fight IQ, dude. He really does. Um he and he's just tough he just has a chin that's just there's there's some things that you cannot coach there's certain physical and mental mental more so some physical but there's just there are some things that you can't coach you can't you cannot coach heart you cannot coach chin and you cannot coach power to me like hardness, toughness, you can encourage that, but that's something that someone has to like either have or they don't have. Like, what do they say in Yellowstone? You're either born a willow or you're born a fucking oak, dude. Like you can, you can, there's things that you can do to make yourself a better version of whatever you're born to be. But like, 
Some people are born with power. Some people are born with a, a fucking iron chin. Some people are just born with a fucking undying, indomitable will. And it's just, that's just all there is to it. Water spike with type Will Woodley. Dude, um, but yeah, I mean, that was a good fight, man. Uh, Gore, but it's like, Gore was talking all that spicy shit, dude. And battle just, I like the fucking calmness, man. He was just like, no, nope. like, uh, and, and battle was talking back to him. He was like, he, he, at the end of the first round, he was like, yeah, one fucking sh one shot. It even fucking hurt me. He's like, that's all you got, motherfucker. I mean, he did drop in the second round. I mean, he did, you know, he did almost knock him out, but and it was a good fight, man. It was a good, like, uh, I think they knew each other. They had a relationship from the regional scene. And, uh, so it was good to see them finally, like, get to, get to fight it out. And that was the true ultimate fighter finale. And Brian Battle is the ultimate fighter. There's there's no question now. Um, pretty cool story. Like, dude doesn't really have a background in anything. Just started doing MMA. He's he's not at a very fucking big camp. It's like uh, high Austin something martial arts in Charlotte. Like, there's not a huge, huge MMA scene in North Carolina. Like, I think, like, Brunson is there. And the, I, I don't know, man. Like, pretty cool like he's just doesn't have a base in anything just started and that's that's actually he is that kind of new generation of fighter where he just like cycles through the mma disciplines like really easily like he's just like you know shifts through the gears pretty quickly um and he's got decent striking man i'll tell you what dude i don't think he wasn't close to knocking gore out but he fucking got his attention a few times man he definitely did where Trayshawn was like fuck man he just cracked me dude i'm supposed to be a striker and he just cracked me so, yeah, man, Brian, I mean, the dude's striking isn't as trash as some people are saying. Like, he's still learning. He's definitely not polished, but he's getting better for sure. And he's at that age where 27, 28, 29, that's where you're you're soaking the knowledge and you're able to turn it into the like the the greatest like results. Like you're you have the maturity at that point. You still have your youth and you're taking the skills and you're like your your potential energy is turning into kinetic energy the most at that age in my opinion i know dude also into the first two rounds herb dean as to the highlight reel oh i know what the fuck was that man what the fuck was that? I, and I do I hate when the dude spit out their mouthpiece. It, it it's like, it's it's a jobber move. Usually, sometimes the mouthpiece doesn't fit well and it falls out. But like, I, I hate the spitting out of the mouthpiece. I keep your fucking mouthpiece into. If it gets knocked out, that's one thing. If you just get fucking boom and your fucking mouthpiece goes flying and you're like on Queer Street, I mean that's just what happens. But like, keep your fucking mouthpiece in, dude. Been socked in the mouth a few times. A couple times pretty fucking hard. I never had a hard time keeping my fucking mouthpiece in. It's not that difficult. Um, all right, next fight. But yeah, man, congrats to battle, dude. Congrats to Brian battle. Pooh Bear Brian the Pooh Bear. Shout out to Jackie Boy, man. I know, I know Jack. I know I wasn't the only one on battle, man. There were some people on battle, but there's a bunch of people on Gore, dude. Brian Battle is another underdog pick that I hit. So yeah, haven't been doing battle my dog picks, man. Even on the couple fights before, I think I hit one or two underdogs. So yeah, it's this was a good bounce back week for me. And uh yeah, uh, I hit battle and uh Cassinata as underdogs. The next fight went more or less how I thought it was going to go. If you know what I mean. And once again, I forgot to make a banner. Because I'm an idiot. Um, Here we go. Am 
man. It's raining out there now. This weather has been fucked, dude. All right. Um, it went kind of how I thought it would. I think I had Allen by decision. Um, I should have known he would finish Alvy, but uh, dude, Brennan Al is gonna get knocked out again. Um, Sam Alvy is probably one of the most predictable UFC fighters. I'm not saying he is the worst, but he is one of the most predictable. He's going to fucking back up to the fence. He's going to look to land the left-hand counter or the right hook, and that's all he's going to fucking do. And he will get his ass whooped. Like, he is, he is one of the most predictable fighters. He's getting up there now. He's super fucking shot. Like, for a 35-year-old, like, think about this, man. For the heavier weight classes, like, even middleweight, even middleweight, the dudes are in their 30s. Like, 35 is not that old. But Sam Alvey, you'd swear he's, like, 39 or 40 because of how fucking just shop-worn he is, dude. He's... I don't know, man. I've been calling for that dude to retire, but he's such a shill like that. He will literally like, and it's crazy though, because you can't really say he's a scab because scabs by definition are dudes that will take less. And they're, they're usually the guys that are like fucking the union. Like the union is trying to like, like stay strong together to fight for higher wages. And the scab just takes it for less wage. You know what I'm saying? But Alvy's getting these, like, fat paychecks. So, like, he's just being a shill, really. Like, he's not, like, you know what I mean? Like, they're paying him good money to just show up and get his fucking ass whooped. Like, what? what? <laughs> he doesn't care. Like, why? I don't know, man. I don't know. We're like, it's, it's just weird, dude. It's fucking weird. That's such a strange situation, Sam Alvy. <laughs> it was Rob. Early stoppage. Dr. Stoppage. Oh, yeah. He just, I think he just entered his prime. Yep. Yep. No, you're right. You're right. Hey, Sam Alvey, everybody thinks you should retire. You said 100 out of 100. Yeah, they can go fuck. Yeah, exactly. You said 100 and 100? Yep. Yep. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yep. Dude, this was a, it was Contender Series slash Ultimate Fighter Finale. That's what this card should have been named. But yeah, I figured Alan would get it done. Uh, dude, he almost got knocked the fuck out though, and I, he probably will in the future. Like, I can't, I can't really see him. Nah. Mm, nah. I'm going to give him the Jay Peterson. Mm, nah. Like, you're going to get fucking knocked out again, motherfucker. Do, 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 do. Breaking news, Jeff Molina. Sorry, I, I did steal that from Mo. Do, 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 do. Jeff Molina saying he will come on Arch. Nuh-uh. Artem. Now I know. I know you're a funny guy. Almost as funny as me. No, I'm just playing. Uh, no, nah, I know. I know. Yeah, no, you're, very, you're very humorous. This is not a joke. Don't tell me. The Jeff is coming to our extreme. I ain't coming to our extreme. Cause I'll be super, I'll be super fucking bottom hurt, man. No, no. Holy shit. Holy shit.
Breaking news. Breaking news. It's true. It's true. It's true. Holy shit. Big, big old shout out to the GOAT, Jeff Molina. That's tight, dude. Um, boys, have we heard from, has anybody heard from the Rabbit Dog? Anybody know when Ark's going live next? I'll have to check the chat. It's on my phone. I, I, I guess I could fucking sign on Twitter on my iPad. Um, that's crazy though, dude. That's really fucking crazy. He clowned baby Durden for leaving. Oh, did he leave the chat? Did Cody Durden leave the chat? Man, that's corny, dog. That's corny, dude. Yeah, dude. Shout out to Jeff Molina, man. That's tight, man. That's real tight. Fuck yeah. Surprise Brunson is an underdog. Yeah, we can talk a little bit about the Brunson fight here in a minute. I'm going to talk about the uh, the main and co-main for 271. But, um, uh, yeah, we can talk about that one, too, because that's like the Coco, I think. Where are we at? Where are we at, boys? Oh, yeah. So, all right, next fight. Dude, and this one, this is uh, an example of, like I said, I was on the right side, but. I was still really impressed. Um, let me get this banner up. Shaft Cat Rock went off is the fucking truth, man. Um, the dude had a lot of hype on him. He's undefeated. He's beaten some pretty decent fighters. But to me, personally... Carlson Harris was his first real, real test. And did he fucking pass it with flying colors or what? Like, Harris is a decent fighter, man. Harris has beaten some decent fighters. He beat he beat my dude Demolidor. He beat Impa, who I think is a, is decent. Like, he's got a lot of fucking power, dude. He's a legit grappler. He had beaten other legit grapplers. This was Shavkat's first real test, and he fucking smoked him. Like, smoked him, dude. And he did it at what Carlson is kind of, like, good at. Like, I'm not saying he's purely a striker, but, like, that's how he wins a lot of fights. Paris is, like, either clubbing something the dude or just knocking him the fuck out. And, like, Shavkat stood in the fire with him and just fucking spinning wheel kicked him, dude. Um, or hook kicked him. It's a spinning hook kick, excuse me. Um... Uh, yeah, man. And he, he threw perfectly. Like he, he hooked it around the guard and caught him behind the ear. That's, that's how, that's ex precisely where you're supposed to do with that kick. Make it seem like you're kicking past him and then hook it back around and pop. Love that kick, dude. One of my favorite kicks. It's not my best kick, but it's it's one of my favorites. Spinning, I, the spinning hook kick is hard. The spinning hook kick is really hard. I'm much my hook kick is much better than my spinning hook kick. It's a really fucking hard kick to do, man. Like to do it and to land it and to land it. Not only to land it, to land it accurately where you because a lot of times the hook kick gets blocked. Even when the even when the, like because you either like overshoot it and you like end up hooking around the whole person's head and it, like hits them on their opposite shoulder or you just hit the guard or you just miss it all together like but to like throw it land it and land it accurately to where it hurts the dude like that was fucking beautiful man and i'll tell you what dude shaft cats ground and pound holy shit that dude um Who does it remind me of? It's like a combination of Stipe and Machida. Both of whom have ridiculous ground and pound. Um, 
maybe throw Shogun in there too. Like what Shogun did in Machida. Spokes my heart. But um yeah, man, his ground and pound is fucking ridiculous. Like he he was so accurate with it and he like man, he they were such like he he was cocking those punches back so far, but still landing them. Like going right through the guard with a guy that's like good off of his back and he just knocked he knocked him out that was another one of those where where carlson harris did go out for he went limp for a second um nasty knockout shabcat's the fucking real deal man i'm not like this is what i don't like about Kamzat. Kamzat could definitely be champion but i just don't like people saying i'm i get why people do it i do the same shit so i'm being a hypocrite but like i, I i'm not gonna do that with shabcat um, but he's got a lot of potential, man. He he's could definitely be a contender. He could absolutely be a contender. Um, he's well rounded. He's got power. He's tough. Um, damn good grappler. Yeah, man. He's he's gonna give some people problems, dude. He's gonna give a lot, of, and he's getting better. He's like twenty seven. Telling you that's that fucking that's that prime time, dude. That prime time age, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. That's where uh, that's where these welterweights and middle. That's where they do their damage, man. Woo! Yeah, yeah, we're gonna talk about that for sure. He's fucking good, dude. Yep. Exactly, dude. Don't fucking do. Don't fucking don't, don't pull up the spot, dog. No, I'm just playing. Um, yeah, I mean that's pretty much what it is. Uh, yeah, I don't want to like. If he beats Usman, I'll bend the knee. I'm not even gonna be a bitch like that. If he if he beats Usman, I will I will bend the knee and pledge fealty. Like I'll still be an Usman stand, but I will I will recognize him as the truth. That's you have to be Usman. I don't want to hear anything about him being the best at 170 until you beat Usman. You beat Usman, fine. I have nothing else to say. I won't even be a punk like that. If if he beats Kamaru Usman, if Kamzat Shamaya beats Kamaru Usman, he is the best welterweight on the planet, period. But until I see it, I'm not going to say that. And it just, it annoys me to hear it, even if it ends up being true, you know. And everybody that has been saying it from the jump can just be like, you know, fuck you, I told you so. And I'll have to be like, yeah, you're right. Fuck me. But, Nah, man. Usman's the best until you beat him. You want to be the best? You got to beat the best. That's that's how I feel, man. And Usman's the best. Period. Right now. You want you want to be better? You want to be the best at 170? Fucking prove it. You ain't proving it knocking out a chinny dude in Mearshart. He, he outstruck a grappler and he outgrappled a striker in GM3 and Lee. Carlson Harris is a striker and he got smoked. So that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. Like, I, I feel like more. I feel like there should be some more hype on Shavkat now. And I get why there's more hype with Kamzat. Like he speaks better English. He does the the broken English trash talk. Like he has a Dagestani thing. Like I, I get why he's popular. Um, and he is, dude. He's really fucking good. And I do think that legitimately, now, he's he's the greatest threat to Usman for sure. I'm willing to admit that. But. We got to see what happens, man. We got to see what happens when he goes more than a couple rounds and it's not going his way. I've seen the dude drop before by jobbers. He's not invincible. People think the dude's invincible. He's not. He's like, well, he dominated Jack or Manson. Jack or Manson couldn't take Sean Strickland down. You know what I'm saying? Like, Maybe Jack Romanson's grappling is a little overstated. You know what I mean? I don't know, dude. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Make your jokes, Artem. No, nah, no. Ar Artem's a big uh Artem's a big Chemayev stand, and that's that's cool. That's chill. Fair play. Fair play, brother. I'm not mad at you. Um next fight. 
this one was frustrating, dude. This one was super frustrating, but it just is what it is. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Nick Maximov out wrestling rats. Um, Punahile Soriano. Um, I'm just joking, man. Like, Maximov is a beast wrestler. Poon is a good wrestler. Maximov is just... Dude, that's what I say. The wrestling rat, dude. He just... Diving for those ankles, man. Diving for those legs. Puna was doing the best he could, but Maximov just wouldn't let the leg go. So he wouldn't let him totally, like float around and take his back because Puna tried to do that a couple times but Maximov was just he was just nibbling at those ankles like the little rodent he is dude nah man he's fucking he's a good wrestler dude he's good and actually uh, Maximov did look better on the feet than I thought he would he cracked Puna a few times he stunned him once in the first round um, Puna cracked him a few times though man and like Dudes with good takedown defense, with really good takedown defense, so he's gonna get knocked out. Like he, like someone, someone Puna, Puna's good, but he is not the, he is not the standard for like striking excellence. You know what I mean? Like he couldn't, he couldn't outsmart Brendan Allen. Like he couldn't. You know what I mean? Like Puna's good. I thought he would. He he clipped Maximov a few times. He did. He hurt him a couple times, but the dude just like dove for the ankle and wouldn't let it go and just got the wrestling. So that's like. Should have known. I'll eat the crow. Maximov is uh, a little better than I gave him credit for, so I, I will give him credit for that, and I will eat crow. Um, I was wrong. Yeah, good job. Uh, congrats to Maximov. Yeah, like I said, a little little better than I originally thought. Um, Punahile Soriano is a is a decent fighter, and uh, he got the better of him, man. So um, hats off to him. Hats off to him. Yeah, he would hit the switch and then he'd fucking but what he'd do is he would like flip him over, but then Maximov would like hold on to his leg so he couldn't qu quite get around. They'd just be stuck in that, like, yeah, that stalled out shit. He will, man. It, exactly. Exactly. Like some refs would have broken those up. And I feel like if Puna had just started like hammer fit because he was doing that, I, I can't remember which round it was. It was like the first or second round. They were in that weird position, and then Puna just started, like, cracking him with hammer fists, and I thought that might, like, be a little bit more effective, and I thought he might do that more, but I guess it just, like, can make him off balance, and I don't know. I don't know, man. It, just, it was frustrating, but it is what it is. Yep, the right ref will definitely let you lay and pray. Like, I think that, and I do, I do respect wanting to – keep the fighter as safe as possible. But some of the rules are bullshit. Like some of the rules encourage stalling, encourage pussification. Like it's, you're just like, you're clearly working the rules. Like, um, I think they need to be way more, uh, they need to be way more adamant and aggressive with penalizing fence grabbing. They need to be way more, um, way more aggressive with the standing up with the lay and pray. There was another fighter that was doing that. It was just laying there. Um, who the fuck was it? Was it wit? Maybe I can't remember, dude. I can't remember who it was, but they were just fucking sitting there. It's like, what the fuck is this, man? Like, get 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 your ass up. Um, but yeah, frustrating fight. I'll eat the crow. I got it wrong. Um, now the main event. I really wish people got people would get more aggressive with the ground and pan. Like, I see so many people fighters do that, and it's usually guys that like have really good jujitsu, and they're like, oh, I'm just hunting for the sub now. Man, it's like. You're such a good grappler. You've got him in this dominant ass position. Just tee the fuck off on them, dude. Like, but you know, I get it. Like, the grappler wants to grapple when they when they get it down like that. So, all right, last bit of crow for for having a decent 
night of picks. I do. I did. It was frustrating to eat crow on the last two. Um, it was nice to be able to kick back and watch those fights and not be too stressed out about it, but it was still kind of frustrating. I wanted to finish with double digit wins. Um, but it is what it is, man. I got to give Strickland the credit. Uh, definitely talked a lot of trash about him. Um, we'll continue to pretty much feel the same way. Like I, I was 70, 30 Hermanson. He was one of my more confident picks. That's why I was saying, dude, the ones I was confident about, I, I, I didn't do shit with them. Like I had Hermanson, Hermanson, Barrio and Arosa were my three most confident picks, dude. And saw those win. Juicy J barely gets it done. Fucking Barrio starched in 16 seconds, and her Manson gets outpointed. Um, as far as the scorecard, this is how I scored the fight. I've only watched it once. This was just my initial score. The first round could honestly have been a draw round. Um, it was it was Strickland with the jab, Hermanson with the leg kicks. I can't remember who was being more aggressive in that round. Probably Strickland. Um, so I can see Strickland edging the first. I could see Hermanson getting the first with landing the harder shots, maybe with the leg kicks and body kicks and stuff. But whatever. The second and the third were very clearly Sean Strickland rounds. Um, the fourth and fifth is where it got a little interesting and where I can see, this is how I can see the split. I didn't score to split myself. I had it 48, 47 Strickland, I think. I think, I think that's what I had. Um, but I had, I, in any case, I had Strickland winning the fight. Um, he did more damage overall. He was more aggressive overall. But the last two rounds, man, he was coasting. He even admitted it himself. He took his foot off the gas. And Hermanson put fucking blood up in his nose, dude. Like, he fucking was doing damage himself. And you can make a case. I think I think Hermanson won the fourth round, period. I don't. I don't care, like if anybody disagrees with that or not, like that's the one round where I'll say, I don't give a fuck what you think. I think Hermanson won the fourth round, the fifth round. You could maybe say Strickland won it with the last little flurry in the last 10 seconds. But like that was mostly just bullshit. That was Strickland trying to put a stamp on it when he really hadn't been doing shit for a lot of that round. So I think that's what I did. I think I scored one, two and three for Strickland and then four and five for Hermanson. But I can see a world where somebody could have scored at one, four, and five for Jack Hermanson. Strickland won that fight, but it's not like he dominated Jack Hermanson. Jack Hermanson's not a striker, dude. So Jack Hermanson hung tough for five rounds with Sean Strickland. So yeah, like that's where I kind of am like, I'm telling you, dude, Strickland, he doesn't really hit that hard. He did drop Hermanson in the second round, but like, I don't know, man. I'm still adamant about fading Strickland at the top. Like, Whitaker will fucking knock him out. Adesanya will knock him out. Cannoneer would probably knock him out. Um, I just did... I don't know, man. You ain't going to win no middle, middleweight championship with a 1-2. It's just... It, you're going to need more than that. Um, and yeah, he did. I will give him credit for his... Defensive footwork for uh, managing the distance, but it's against a guy that's not known for striking, dude. It's against like you—you you struck with a grappler for five rounds. Like I'm just—I just wasn't blown away by it. It—it it was a very tentative fight. It was very frustrating to watch. Like I will give Strickland credit for the takedown defense. Um, it was better than I thought it was going to be. I thought Hermanson would have more success with that. He didn't sell out for the takedowns too much, to be honest with you. He was content just kind of being on the feet. Like, I think he just kind of gave up on it after he realized he couldn't do it a couple times. I don't know. Maybe that's not true. But I don't know, man. It, it was frustrating. I'll give Strickland credit. I'll eat the crow. I still think he's going to knock the fuck out. Um, but, yeah, tough one. Overall, good night, though. 9-4. I'll take it after shitting the bed the first two weeks. So, yeah, there you go. There you go.
Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. I agree. Strickland versus Costa. See, I think Costa will knock him out too, man. I think Costa will fucking knock him out. What's up, Jackie boy? Jack, you see uh you see um the goat Jeff Molina might uh might come into one of our streams. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Um yeah, what's going on, Jack? Congrats, dude. Congrats on that uh on that battle. Well, Jack did good. Jack did good with his plays. I can't remember which all he hit. You can feel free to put him in the chat if you would like. Um, I can't really remember, but I know Jack had a good night. Um, yeah, I had a good night of picks, man. I went nine and four. Um inside the top thousand in tapology. So that's always I'll always take that. Um so yeah, gonna look to improve upon that in the coming week for UFC 271. Um, I do want to preview the co-main and the main event. And we can talk a little bit about Brunson Cannonier as well, if y'all want to. Um, yeah, right? Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, same here. I had Castanet in battle. Uh, I was on Puna, but yeah, Maximov did what he did his thing. Oh. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was, uh, UFC Vegas 47, pretty good nine and four. Um, Jack says whiffed on Peterson and Alvy, but Peterson felt justified after the fact, didn't expect a roasted to cover the minus 300. That's certainly, um, yeah, I think in hindsight, it wasn't a bad, uh, wasn't a bad pick, man. He got close to winning that fight. Um, a roast almost got knocked out in the second round. There's just no two ways about it. Um, uh, and he almost knocked Peterson out in the second round. So that was a, that was a crazy fight, dude. That was crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. He hurt Puna's leg in the third round with one of the takedowns. Um, yeah, Puna hurt his knee. I think in the third round. Forgot about that. Thank you for mentioning that, Noah. Forgot about that shit. Um, yeah, dude. Tough one. But what stood out to me is what stood out to me. Philip Rowe, Jailton Almeida, John Castaneda, Chidi, Shavkat, um, those, that's what really stood out to me. Battle, while he... Battle did what I expected him to do. It's like, uh, survive the storm, outpoint, um, gore, and get it done. So, like, that didn't really shock me that much. What's What really, what shocked me the most, the three things that shocked me the most, I'll say the three most shocking moments. I'll say, Chidi, um, Shavkat, and either the Arosa Peterson fight or uh no, I'm gonna say Jails and Almeida. Almeida, Shavkat, and Chidi stood out the most to me. Hakeem Duwodu put on a pretty damn good performance too. But yeah, Castaneda, man, Castaneda looked good. Man, he looked good. No, I can't. I cannot. Yeah, I can't, dude. I can't remember what it was. It might have been in one of Arc streams, but he, he, Brian pissed me off about something and I blocked him. I'll go back through and unblock. I've unblocked a lot of people. Um, I'll go back through the list and unblock him. Um, but yeah, usually I'll say this though. Usually, if I block somebody, it's because they piss me off. Like I, I don't block people for nothing. They're, they're like you're either being a troll or you said something or done something that's pissed me off. Because there's no reason. I don't just block people like, ha ha, I block you for nothing. Like, that's, that's retarded. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll go back through. I'll go back through and unblock you. If it's, are you just, is it, there's a lot, a lot of times what will happen is these dudes will be under a different name. 
And so I won't know it's them. Like they won't be under that exact name. So I'll, I'll go back through the list on Baki though. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you being here. I, I can't remember what you did to piss me off back then, but yeah, I'll go back through and unblock it. I seem to remember it being on one of our streams though. Um, but yeah, where are we at? Okay, so that was that was UFC Vegas 47. We're about an hour and a half in. I think it's time for an intermission, boys. Um, I need to get my head right. Let me use the bathroom. So yeah, intermission, smoke break, smoke them if you got them. Take a quick five, and uh, I'll be right back. Put this, uh, put this banner up. All right, boys, I'll be back in a short, short.
All right, boys, I'm back. Telling you, dude, it's a lot of possibilities. Yeah, Jeff Molina is a true Arcadian, man. That's fucking awesome. Uh, if you fuck with, if you're a fighter and you fuck with the Arkan Dome, dude, you're a real one. Seriously, because like it gets heated, man. Like people talk trash about fighters in there. So, like, if you, dude, some of those fighters, like, they're tough, dude. They're physically and mentally tough for fighting, but they can't handle the like, some of them can't handle the trash talk and like people like saying mean things about them online. So if you can hang tough in the Arkham Dome, dude, and can take people like treat you, like you're a fucking real one. I, I respect the shit out of that, man. So yeah, big up to Jeff Molina, dude. That's tight. That's super tight. Can't wait to see that dude's next fight. I definitely picked him in his last one. Um, fuck. All right, hold on. I forgot to do one thing during intermission. Um, I will. Uh, Take you boys on a journey as, as far as I can go. I think the old lady actually might be on the phone, so I can't can't go in there with the sound on. Um, but yeah, I do got to grab a charger because my shit's dying. All right, let's go. One last time into the breach. All right. Mission was successful. Secured the payload or the package or whatever. Whatever people say in that situation. All right. That's more like it. Now, where the fuck are we at? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. That's where the fuck we're at. We're talking about UFC 271 now, boys. Um, like I said, shout out to Mo MMA. Um, Mo dropped his uh, UFC 271 prediction and betting advice video, so make sure and go check that out, out everyone. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole card, um, and I don't know if I'm going to yeah, I might give a pick or two um, for these, the ones we're going to talk about, but I may not. I haven't decided yet. But um, we'll, you know what? We'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about um, Brunson and Cannoneer as well. I think I'll probably go for about three hours today, I expect. Something like that. Barring some unforeseen thing. Um, okay, let me make a banner for this. Mistaken, Jared Brunson. So, this is a good fight, man. Like, this is a top five middleweight bout. Um, both of these dudes just right on the cusp, needing to win this fight and probably one more, I expect. As a matter of fact, I think a really good fight would be for the winner of this fight to fight Sean Strickland. Um, 
I think Strickland needs one more. I think these guys need one more. And I think that's the perfect one. Um, because Cannoneer and Brunson both have losses to Whitaker. Now, if Whitaker loses to Adesanya, I could see one of these guys getting the title shot. But me personally, I think that the winner of this fight should fight Sean Strickland as a title eliminator, personally. Because depending on how the fight goes, if if Adesanya has a rough fight with Whitaker, it may not be as simple as a quick turnaround. So I think you're he, he, he might need time off anyway. Um, so I think that that would be appropriate personally, but what the fuck do I know? Interested to, uh, I need to, um, I did watch Mo's video. I need to go back back and watch Jack's aftermatch video and see what he thought about, um, what's next for Strickland. But me personally, and I'll leave this comment on your video too, Jack. I think, I think that's what's next. I think you give Strickland the winner of this fight and then make that the title eliminator. Um, so let's start with, let's start with Cannon here. He is 14 and five. I mean, everyone knows what the deal is with with Cannoneer, man. He's got a lot of power. Most of his wins are by knockout. Um, I wouldn't say he's chinny. He's pretty tough, man. Um, He can be hurt and knocked out. There's no doubt. Like, Sean Jordan knocked him out. Reyes knocked him out. Whitaker hurt him bad. Um, He's pretty tough, though, man. <laughs> I had a fucking tree. Um, I think it's the fucking garlic cookies, dude. Garlic cookies are so good, man, but it's fucking scratching the shit out of my throat. Um, excuse me. So... And you do you look at who he's lost to? His worst loss is Sean Jordan. Other than that, it's either a champion, a former champion, a title challenger, or that's it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's it, dude. In his UFC career, he's lost to Sean Jordan, Glover by decision, Jan by decision, got knocked out by Reyes, decision by Whitaker. Those are his only losses. His wins by comparison aren't quite as amazing. Like the Jack Hermanson win looks pretty good. That's one that one's not aging terribly. Um, the Gaslam win isn't terrible. Like neither of those are. I don't know. I would say that they're aging good or bad. Honestly, that just I think they're decent wins. Um, Anderson Silva, you know, he was really old. Branch, yeah, whatever. Branch isn't that good. Um, I mean, you can say, oh, he knocked out what what people say, oh, he knocked out uh Tiago Santos or whatever, but I don't I don't rate Branch that highly. Um, nor do I rate Kuta Laba that highly. Um, but Cannoneer is coming down from heavyweight. He did fight at heavyweight at one point. Um, I think he's more of a smaller, light heavyweight. Honestly, like or, or you could either say a big middleweight or a smaller light heavyweight. I think he's that's what he is really about size wise, but yeah, he's has a lot of power. There's no doubt about that. He has a lot of power. Um, The only dude he hasn't knocked out at middleweight is Gaslam. Um, Now granted he hasn't, you know, he's, he likes it. He's fighting branch Silva Hermanson, you know, they expected, I picked him against Hermanson and knock Hermanson out. I picked him against Silva. I picked him against branch. Like it's, those are pretty easy picks. I did pick him against Whitaker and A. Crow. Um, Whit- <laughs> it's Robert Whitaker, man. He's a former champion. Um, and then, you know, he looked pretty good in the Gaslam fight. He dropped Gaslam. Um, 
Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, I think if you're picking Cannoneer, I would almost just assume it's by knockout. Um, but yeah, let me, um, I'm going to get to Brunson real quick and then I'll just kind of tell you uh, what I think about the, the matchup itself. Just briefly go over. So I didn't really do a tail of the tape. They're about the same age. Brunson's a little bit older. Brunson's taller. Cannoneer has a half inch reach. That's they have the same reach. Um, Brunson's a little taller, about the same reach. Brunson's a little older. That's the tail of the tape. Um, not they're 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 pretty much the same age, pretty much the same reach. Brunson's a little taller. That's the tail of the tape. Um, uh, now Brunson. Let's look at Brunson's record. Brunson has way more fights. Way more fights. Um, now, he has been knocked out way more than Jared Cannonier. I think it's, I think it's fair to say that uh, Brunson is the less durable fighter. I don't think that's uh, any kind of a stretch. Um, now he's getting knocked out by good fighters too. He's getting beaten and knocked out by good fighters too. Now the exception is Kendall Grove. That's his worst loss. So what I usually do is when I'm trying to figure out like wins and losses and whose losses are worse, whose losses are better. And they kind of have like similar records. I usually scratch off the best win and the worst loss and then look at the fights in between. And that's how I gauge it usually. Um, so yeah, scratch off Kendall Grove and scratch off, um, who's, who would you say Brunson's best win is? I would say it's either Uriah Hall, 2016, Machida, Machida was kind of past it, um, or Shabazian. Hold on a second. Sorry, I had to talk to the lady for a second. Um, yeah, shout out the uh, shout out the wonderful and beautiful lady TC. Um, uh, so yeah, <clears throat> Brunson. So who would you say Brunson's best win is? I would say it's either Machida, Machida, Hall. Hill, maybe Lorenz Larkin. I don't know, man. Eight people in the building. Shout out to eight people in the building. Nikki, what's up, Mac? Pimp Daddy Mac in the chat. Nikki elbows in the chat. <clears throat> what up, brother? How you doing, man? Mac in the building. Big ear in the building, man. I've been slacking on the chat, man. Sorry, boys. But yeah, man. We got we got boys. We got Jeff Molina. In the fucking Arkham Dome. It's a really good card. I'm honestly going Whitaker, especially since Izzy been acting like an emotional teenager. I don't hate it. Whitaker is actually a bad guy. Whitaker hasn't shown me anything. Maybe y'all have low standards. I have high standards. Um, Izzy annoying. I, I no disagreement there. I've been looking for a spot to evade to Ivasa. Is this the time? We do. We are definitely going to talk about that one. Um, we are definitely going to talk, talk about that one, brother here. Um, hope you're doing well. Max says, yes, Strickland has been holding it down. Yeah, hey, man, Strickland has been quietly stringing them together and feeding me crow, so I can't hate on the guy, man. He's doing his thing. Pretty similar to Power Bar versus Cheaty Fight. Jared starches him one round in the first round, or Brunson grinds him down. Nikki says, what's up? Don't forget Sean Jordan styled on Derek Lewis, so exactly. It's, dude, Derek Lewis is one of the toughest fighters to wiki cap. He really is, man. David Branch had a really good run outside UFC, but didn't live up to potential for sure. Yeah, I think that's fair. 
Um, you know me. I just got my hot takes on these fighters, man. Uh, Brunson has been to has been the underdog in the past few. He's won too. That's true. Nikki says Brunson won't be able to take or keep Jared down. Jared has heavy hands. I can see Brunson getting clipped. Yeah, I think that's uh that's definitely the side. Like if you're on Cannoneer, if you're on Cannoneer and you think he wins, like I don't think over five rounds if he doesn't knock Brunson out, I can't. I don't know, man. That's I I haven't made up my mind on this fight 100% yet. I really haven't. I'm still mostly on the fence. I have a slight lean one way, um, but yeah, dude. I mean, exactly. It could be like uh, like Noah said, just like could be just like Cheaty and Power Bar. You're taking notes. Pretty sure Shabazi and Holland and Till were all favored to beat him. Yep. Yeah, that was the one that kind of like that was the one that was like, oh shit, Brunson, Brunson isn't exactly pillow fisted himself. Um now he hurt Robert Whitaker in their first it was the first fight. He didn't like he didn't knock him down or anything, but he stunned him. Um Brunson does have a decent amount of he he has that kind of power that'll get your attention enough to get the takedown. That's what he's been doing lately. It's like he'll he's just he'd be just honest enough on the feet to get the takedowns. Thought he was Rob versus Silva. Oh, oh, Brunson, dude. Derek Brunson was 100% robbed against Anderson Silva. Yes, I agree with that. Definitely. Lobby Queens, they got Brunson. Till, in terms of perspective, yeah, I was thinking Till. Ty will lose via KO or decision. Throw a submission out for both guys, says Nikki. Says, sup, Brian. Yeah, I got to go. I got to go back and unblock Brian. Um, I've been doing a lot of unblocking recently. Been, uh, been trying to turn over a new leaf for old 2022. Turned over a new leaf with the, with my fight picks. Finally, dude. I was getting my fucking ass handed to me, man. But anyway, yeah. So this is a tough pick, dude. This is a tough pick. I don't know what uh I don't know what the status or the future of the Mecca holds, but if the Mecca if the Mecca does go down, um, I can see this being a very highly contested pick. I think people in general are gonna be split on this pick, Cannonier or Brunson. If Brunson's the underdog, people are going to be fucking all over it. So I, I, it'll be interesting like to see, and I'm sure uh, um, some of the dudes in the chat will be a lot more onto this than I will. Um, the line movement is probably going to be real interesting. This one, like I can see if Brunson's an underdog, I can, I can almost guarantee some people are going to be betting him and it might move the line. And if it moves to where like Cannoneer is an underdog, I'm sure some people will fucking put money on that too. So I, I don't know, man, I, I don't know how that shit works, but, just thinking about it, like, I wouldn't be surprised. Maxis, thanks, Brian. Dude, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, like, I'm willing, I'm willing to sit here and say that I think that most of the fighters that people say are on something are probably on something. I don't think that's crazy, like, I'm not going to sit here and like, like Usman's one of my favorite fighters. I, I, I stand him like a motherfucker. He's probably on something. You know what I'm saying? Like he probably, you know, I don't fucking know. I'm not going to accuse him of anything like I, but I don't like, I'm not going to die on that hill either. But the thing is like, I wouldn't be surprised if Colby was either. You know what I'm saying? Like I, it, the physique thing I don't know, man. There's been dudes popped that weren't, didn't have crazy physiques. So that's kind of, I don't know. But yeah, I, it's, the shit is rampant, dude. It runs rampant throughout the UFC. Like there's a lot of dudes on some, and like recently, especially, I don't know how it is now, but USADA was like, had really fucking like scaled back their testing because of COVID. So I think a lot of dudes were fucking juicing during that, like the last year or two. Personally, I don't know that. I can't prove that. Just my two cents on it. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, I mean, just been on roids was good if you're back in it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like it's for sure. For sure. TJ was on and then look what happened. Yeah. It's like, I, I'm not going to accuse people like out of the blue, like that, 
if they haven't popped before, but like just because they haven't popped doesn't mean they're not on something. Just because they have a good physique doesn't mean they're on something either. So it's kind of just like I kind of just accept the idea that mm, yeah, you're probably like you're probably like I made a uh, mm, sketchy. Like um, who is the other dude that looked ridiculous? William Knight. Yeah, like come on, dude. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I mean. It is what it is, man. I don't really care that much anyway, to be perfectly honest with you. I used to go really hard for that shit, but then it's like, mm, a lot of at least half of them are on it, I would say. I'd say at least half of the UFC fighters are doping. Maybe it's not that much. Maybe it's like 30. But. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see. What, yeah. It is, man. You saw it as a joke. It, it, it is a fucking joke. Because, I, dude, I, when I had my old channel, I did a deep dive into that, about the whole John Jones thing. Like, I did, I was even starting to do, like, research into, like, Terenabal and its origin, the doctor that came up with it, and, like, how you actually test for it, and what's, like, what constitutes true, like, does it does the shit like it does does metabolite pulsing even exist like has it actually been tested in a control like i was dude i and it just it just spinning wheels man like you saw it as a joke they don't fucking care enough it's if they do pop anybody it's just gonna be to like satisfy some kind of either you have an axe to grind with that fighter or it's i don't know i just i, I don't take it seriously it's 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 been shown to be a joke and that like they the punishments are just not consistent at all and i just i don't take it very seriously so yeah dude the brunson and cannoneer man I, I don't know dude i really don't know man i my my slight lean is toward brunson my slight lean is toward Brunson. Um, because of the way he's been fighting recently. I, yeah. That's, I mean, I will most likely end up going with Brunson. Um, but I'm sketched about it, man. Because I could see, I could see him getting knocked out in the first round. But, Cannoneer's takedown defense has looked better recently, but Brunson is a fucking good wrestler. Like, he is a fucking beast wrestler. I would not be surprised to see him grind it out. I don't know. Their power is the last thing to go, man. Cannoneer can fucking spark him. I'm I'm really sketched about it. But if I if you have a gun to my head, I'm I'm probably gonna end up picking Brunson. We'll see, man. I don't know. I don't fucking know, man. Jagged boy. Initially on Cannoneer. Nick says, what up, Jack? Nick says he's on Jared. Brunson is an underdog. What could go wrong? Am I right? Yeah, exactly. Says Nikki Helbos. Brunson older than Jared by a year. Yeah, so like. Like about the same. They're both old. They're both past it. Um, although to say that, like, they're both like kind of having this late career resurgence. They're, they're two guys that are old in age, but are having a like a late career resurgence. I don't think because that because uh, Cannoneer lost to Whitaker that he's like done or anything. Like, I think this is a very close fight, man. Both of these guys are like on the same level. Um, as far as like overall potential and yeah, dude, Cannoneer has a lot of power and, and Brunson has a dodgy chin. Like that's, that's a pretty good read. Um, Cannoneer gets taken down a lot. He's looked better recently, but he doesn't have the best takedown defense. Um, and Brunson, Brunson will sell out for the takedowns more than Whitaker. Um, and I think Brunson is just physically stronger than Robert Whitaker, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, could be wrong about that, but it, Brunson's fucking strong. And I, I think I think he's going to have success with grappling. And I could see him even 
TKO and Cannoneer with ground and pound, but we'll see about that, man. I don't know, but I, I am leaning Brunson. Um, so the co-main boys, the co-main man, this one, I'm almost as excited, if not more excited for this than the main event. Um, I mean, y'all know what time it is, dude. It's a fucking kick-ass co-main event, man. This is absolutely, this absolutely headlines any fight night card. Very well. Like it, it's the perfect cherry to any fight night card. Um, but as a co-main, it's pretty nice. It's pretty tasty too. Um, man, this is another one where like, ah, man, I don't know. The, the knee jerk reaction is to go, oh, someone's getting knocked out. Probably. Right. Um, Although it seems like every time the we say that, like it doesn't happen. But I, the way these two fight, nah, I don't. I really don't see this being a Derek Lewis and Ganu situation, and I don't think in Der- that Lewis and Ganu would happen the same way if they fought again. I just think that's just kind of a fluky outlier. I feel pretty comfortable saying that one of these two is going to sleep. Um. And it's tough to like this one is a tough fight to wiki cap because Lewis and I've I've dude I'm on record about Derek Lewis quite a bit in the last year and it's like it's pretty much the same assessment I make every single time even like even after like eating crow and being right about him in fights and like. I still pretty much just feel the same way, man. Like this fight is a tough fight to pick. I don't think it's quite as easy as Derek Lewis has the most knockouts. So Ty's going to sleep or like Derek Lewis is fraudulent and passive and like Ty's going to, or, or like, you know, Dawkins is a, you know, is a fraud or what. I don't think it's quite as easy as something like that. I think, I think this fight, I, I don't know, man. Because if you look at Derek Lewis, like, dude, he's not a good nail. He's a pretty shitty nail, actually. Like, if if it doesn't go Derek Lewis's way, and you're a decent striker, you you got a pretty good chance of knocking out Derek Lewis. Like, Curtis Blades was pretty fucking close to knocking out Derek Lewis. And man, like, Ty cracks, dude. Ty has the power to put Derek Lewis to sleep. You better believe it. Um, so it's tough, man. It's uh, fuck, dude. Lewis, Lewis has a crazy hammer, but he's a pretty shitty nail. Um, Ty's reckless, though, man. I don't care what people say. Like the dude, he he fought pretty good. He fought pretty good and smart in the Augusta Sakai fight, but. That's not nearly the same level of threat. Like it's, it's, ah, man, I, I really feel like this will be a true 50, 50, like they will start exchanging and whoever, whoever lands seriously first, like this is what usually happens with Derek Lewis. He'll get into 50, 50 exchange. If he gets clipped, it's not like he goes to sleep. But what he will do is start to fold up. He will start to pack up shops, start folding those chairs up, start putting the tent down, start wrapping things. He'll he starts to look for a way out. Um, but if it goes the other way and they're just in a fucking firefight and Lewis clips him, I do feel pretty confident in saying that Ty will just straight go to sleep. It'll, it'll be like a Dacus or a, or a Curtis or um, he yeah he'll just yeah um. <sighs> Fuck, man. I don't know. This is a really good fight. What are y'all thinking about this one, man? Nikki says he likes Nazrat dog wise. Nice. Says Lewis by KO or decision. Only three rounds. Labyrinth says I think Lewis sparks him out. Nikki says I'm going to do a double chance. Lewis by KO or decision. I think it's nice. 165. Nice. Good shout. Molina forgave me for fading him against 
Uh, Lacerda, nice, dude. The community, what's up, whoever you are? Labyrinth UFC breakdown with that. That last performance, I think it's time to start giving Lewis some respect. I agree with that, man. I definitely faded Lewis last time, and it uh, it bit me in the ass. Noah says I'm on Lewis just because Hardy had him before he rushed in and got caught. Lewis more experienced in these matchups. Jackie Boy on the, the, the New Zealander. Here says I agree. Ty speed scary for Lewis here. Yeah, that's the thing, man. That's what sketches me out about this fight. Is like you, the Lewis knockout is always there. It's all like whether he actually gets it or not is a different story, but the potential for it is there every fucking time. Now with two of Asa, like offensively, oh yeah, like Lewis, you you crack Lewis good once or twice, and he hasn't gotten the knock. I mean, obviously you get the knock, I'm mean, fine, but you crack him once or twice, man, and you're not going away in your pressure fighter, like he'll he'll start to he'll start to almost give it to you. Um, but until that point, man, fuck, dude, I don't know. I don't even know, especially if he works leg kicks. Ty couldn't hold Derek's bags, bruh, bruh. Hardy clipped Ty and Lewis has way better boxing than Hardy. TKO, but yeah, and see, that's, that's the other thing too. That's the other thing. They both got knocked out by Junior. Um, it's like Curtis knocked Junior out, dude. Curtis was on his way to lock, knocking Lewis out. So yeah, I can see, I can see Lewis getting knocked out. I can see both of these guys getting knocked out. But yeah, I think it's, I think it's a true 50-50, man. I think it's like if Ty, if Ty goes in there and can avoid um, getting clipped, um, yeah, I think he can, I think he can knock Lewis out in like the second round. But like the three rounder, man, that's that's. Uh, Yeah. It's Lewis swings wild sometimes too, man. So if Ty fights smart, he can beat him. If he leg kicks him, if he let if he stays smart and doesn't throw naked leg kicks, um, and throws in combination and ends him with fucking ends him with leg kicks, um, I think that he can knock Lewis out. If he if he I think if he comes in there trying to knock Lewis out, he's gonna get knocked out. I mean, he says good night, Ty. This Ty isn't on the level. Lewis should be able to put him on stanky legs. I remember a caber telling me Hardy would smoke Ty and that Ty is one of the worst fighters on the roster, especially after Lewis' last performance. Nick says it wasn't me. He says, I'm not a Hardy backer. Nick, you can't fade your fellow shoe enthusiasts. Come on, man. He says, I bet Ty. He says, no, no, Jackie. He hasn't answered my shoey challenge yet. Uh-oh, yeah, until then, man. Until then, fucking talk is cheap, Ty. Come on, doc. Then again, maybe Ty could do something similar to what Mitrione did to Lewis. Yeah, that's what that's. Yeah, I can see it's a 50 50 to me, man. It's really like it's a coin flipper, to be honest with you. Like, and I, I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly who my initial I think it was initially 50 50. Like, fuck, 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 fuck. Like, I, it's not one of those where I can go back to like, oh, my first instinct was this. And that's almost was like, I really don't remember what my first instinct was on this one. So I'm going to have to just fucking search my feelings and go with what I know to be true, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I agree with that. Ty's way better striking than blades and blades was landing whatever he wanted on Lewis until he shot in. Yeah. It's like, I mean, Curtis knocked out junior though. And junior knocked out, um, knocked out Lewis and Ty. Ty's been kicking a lot, but that could hurt Ty. If Derek counters with a right. Yeah. If he, it, I feel like body kicks will work really good. Body like teeths and stuff. Lewis Lewis doesn't like getting kicked in the body. Volkov was having a lot of success with that. I know Volkov got knocked out, but <clears throat> Volkov was having a lot of success kicking Lewis to the body. I think that could work for Ty too. Maybe head kicking him. That's he's worried about takedowns. It will be the first time Ty has won in enemy territory too. Not having to worry about that and just standing and banging is a different story. Lewis also starts Doc is like nothing. Yeah. Boys, I dude, good points, man. I just and that's why it's just like 
it, they're all good points, man. It's just like point, counterpoint, point, counterpoint, point, counterpoint. It's like it's it, it it's I'm still just right why it's just 50 50. Just it's just gonna be just I just close my eyes and just let the fucking force guide me, dude. Cause it just I, I don't know, man. I think trying to like wiki cap this one, it's it's tough, man. It's tough. Like lesser lesser strikers have put Derek Lewis away, and I think Derek Lewis has beaten better fighters than Ty before, so or fighters that are on Ty's level. So I, I don't know, man. I don't fucking know. I'll probably make my pick on that one a little later on this week. I have not completely made up my mind on that one. It's a good fight, though. Should I think it loses head. Houston, he hates fighting. It's safe to say Ty is more battle tested than Dawkins. Ty's tougher than Dawkins. I think I think it's fair to say that Ty is tougher than Dawkins. Dawkins look like a beast, but is yeah, yeah, that's fair for sure, for sure. It's a tough one, man. It's, it's tough. Like I I do. I think Dawkins might be a little bit faster than Ty, maybe, but I think Ty hits harder for sure. I think Ty's got better kickboxing. I think Ty's got better kicks. His hands are pretty good too. Like Ty has pro boxing experience, so. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I think I think he's a little more durable than Dawkins, but dude, sometimes that ain't enough with Lewis. Just I don't know. I don't know, dude. Toughen. Toughen boys. The next one I have my mind made up. The next one I definitely have my mind made up. Uh it, where we going? What we got? What we got? What we got? What we got? Um we got on that. We have a blocked. Russian bot. Nick says he likes uh, O'Neal and Izzy as parlays. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards Perez, too. Yeah, like Ty, I mean, he got hurt by Hardy, man. Got hurt by Greg Hardy, got knocked out by Junior. I don't know, man. He's been, he was knocked out in kickboxing. I'm, I'm, I don't know, dude. It's a 50 50 to me, man. It's a coin flip. If Ty's got it in his mind to brawl and Lewis decides to fight Ty like he fought Dawkins, Ty's going to sleep. Um, if Ty's smart and lets Lewis swing wild and shit and like just stays on the back foot and then puts, you know, mashes on the gas in the second, I think he knocked Lewis out. So it's just, I, I don't know which one's going to happen, man. I don't know. I got to think about it. I got to sit on that one for a second. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll just get, we'll, um, we'll table that for the time being and, uh, and move on to this main event, man. Stylebender and Whitaker too. It's a great fight. Um, I don't think that anybody can say that Whitaker has not earned this. He definitely, uh, I mean, let's be real, dude. He got put away bad by Adesanya. That was, that was a that was a bad knockout. Um, he basically got knocked out twice. So to to get knocked out that badly in Australia, like um, and then to be able to come back, and it's just he's not he he had to go through a bit of a murderer's row to get back to it. He had to be Till. He had to be Cannoneer. Um, hold on a second. Sorry, I should talk to the wife for a second. Um, so. Yeah, man, let's look at Whitaker. Let's look at Whitaker real quick. Yeah, I mean, Whitaker has lost one fucking fight. At middleweight, dude. And it was to Adesanya.
knocked out Tavares, knocked out Brunson, knocked out Jacare. Two tough fights with Romero. But yeah, he had to go through Till, Cannoneer, and Gaslam. Three good fighters. Boom, boom, boom. So yeah, I mean, he's definitely earned the title shot. He earned his way back. Um, to get a crack at the bell, dude. So I, I respect the shit out of that. But I'm going with Adesanya, dude. Like, I, I just... Adesanya got exposed by Jan Blahovic. Jan is a considerably bigger dude than Whitaker. Um, and I just think he's a better guy. I know Whitaker's a good wrestler. Jan is a better grappler. Um, like, I, I just... I think this is more or less the same fight. I don't know if it ends that early. I, I think it could be end up being more competitive, but <clears throat> I do think it ends the same way. And that's Whitaker getting knocked out. Like they're about is another one like <clears throat> Adesanya is like what one year older or something. Um, but it's not like now Whitaker now Adesanya is aged out and Whitaker is in his prime. It's like they're pretty much the same age. Um I think they're pretty much the same fighter, to be honest with you. Like, uh, it, and it's just crazy to me to think that, well, like some people are picking Whitaker because he lost to Blavish, but like, it, why? I mean, Whitaker lost to Adesanya, but you're picking him to beat Adesanya. Like, I just don't see why you, you can't, like, people don't think that Adesanya can bounce back from the, the loss of Jan. I don't, I don't understand that, but, um, I think it's still pretty much the same fight, man. Like Whitaker is a really good offensive striker. Um, he throws he throws good uh, punch kick combinations. Like his one two high kick is really fucking nasty. Um, but dude, like he just I'm not gonna say he's a glass jaw. I've said that before in in anger and in jest. Um, but he's not the most durable man. Like he's he hasn't been knocked out a million times, but he gets he gets clipped and hurt in. Not every fight, but just about every fight, dude. Like, he got dropped in the till fight. He got, like, fucking even Cannoneer didn't knock him down, but he hurt him. You know? Like, I... I, I just... With a a dude that does not have the best chin, it's not glass, but he's not the most durable guy. Adesanya is still the sharpest sniper at 185 and he's just going to snipe and get, snipe him again, dude. I think he's just going to get knocked out. I think he's going to knock Whitaker out. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I haven't decided which round, but I'm going to go out of Sonny by knockout. I just, I see no reason for it, it not to go down like that. Nick likes Ronnie Lawrence too. Noah says, baby Bender going to sleep. Think this fight goes the distance. Pretty sure I know who will win this fight and how. Last fight of Mecca 6, week 1, 2. Check MMA World video from 35 minutes ago. I see the thumbnail here, huh? Um, yeah, dude. I don't know, man. Like, maybe I'm sleeping on Whitaker. Maybe it ends up biting me in the ass, but I think he's getting the I think he's gonna get knocked out again, dude. Like I Adesanya isn't any less of a dangerous striker and Whitaker's chin isn't any, you just can't, I don't know. Like, even if he grapples, I think that, uh, like he might get Adesanya down. Adesanya has pretty good takedown defense and pretty good get ups. Like he's not amazing, but a much better striker than a grappler. But I think his takedown defense is good enough that like, I don't know, man. Like everyone, I hear everyone talking like Whitaker has this like godlike cardio. I've seen the dude get tired before. And you get tired against Stylebender, he's just going to fucking knock you out. Like you're going to get like knee in the face or something, dude. Like I just, I don't, I just don't see it, man. Like if he gets tired and starts shooting for takedowns, Adesanya is going to fucking knee him in the face. Like it's, no, nah, he's getting knocked out, man. I got Adesanya by knockout. <clears throat> Oh yeah, he's soused. He's soused. Yeah, that's a drooping ass titty. Like he's he's yeah. He's gonna be on that shit. He's just he's still he's still got the attributes that 
won him the first fight that won him the belt he's not any less he's just as good and now more experienced like i think the yacht to lost Jan was probably good for him to be honest with you so yeah i don't i don't like adesanya i i have faded him so many times dude i think he's super duper cringy um but i think he's also going to win this fight i picked him to be Whitaker the first time i'm gonna do it again i see no reason not to <clears throat> But I don't hate, you know, Whitaker. That's pretty good value for an underdog, dude. I, I don't hate a bet on Whitaker. I just, I don't see it personally. But that's what it is, man. Um. So. I'm trying to think of what to do now, boys. Because... Talked about Vegas 47. Talked a little bit about 271. I'm trying to think if I want to keep the stream going for a little bit longer or what. Is anything is anything going on? Is anybody like about to start a stream or anything? Yeah, I no, I get I run to that problem too, Jack. I run to that problem too. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. Like I would be, I would be super happy for Whitaker. I would rather Whitaker be champion, but I don't see it. I would like to be proven wrong though. I, I, I am rooting for Whitaker in this fight and I'm probably rooting for Ty. If I, if I had to pick one. I don't know who I'm going to pick to win that fight, but if I say who I want to win, probably Ty. I think Lewis has had his time. You know, I'd like to see Ty um, move into that, uh, move into that upper echelon and get a, maybe even get a crack at some point. I think that'd be interesting. Cool. What fights do or do not go the distance, right? Ready to start a deep dive. Okay, cool. Well, boys, I think, I think I might just go ahead and wrap it up. I was initially going to go about three hours, but um, the old lady ordered Chinese food and just got here, and it's looking pretty fucking dank. So I think I'm going to just wrap it up here um, and then listen to Brady for a little bit and eat this food and get chiefed up. I think that's, I think that's the game plan. Jack says, Casey takes Roxy out back like an old yeller. Um, Brady's channel, Nick says. China, Noah says. Yeah, Nick, says Jack. All right, boys. Well, I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. Um, yeah, just uh, thank you, Jack. Appreciate that. Appreciate you stopping by, dude. Um, yeah, had a nice little bounce back at UFC Vegas 47. I sure needed it because my picks were sucking a big old fat one before that. Um, but yeah, I want to expand on that in 271. Got some, uh, definitely got some tape to do on a couple fights, but I have made most of my picks. I say I've made probably eight or nine picks for 271. I'll make the rest here in the next few days. But uh, pretty good stream, man. Um, I want to thank everybody that came through. I think we had eight people in here. It was the most at one point. Um, but yeah, dude. These are uh, these are good streams. You can't expect like a ton of people to come through in the middle of the day. It just is what it is. So I really appreciate everyone that did um, stop through and uh, chop it up with me, man. It was a good time. Um, I will probably be probably be back later this week, Thursday or Friday, maybe to give my official picks. Um, yeah, man. Uh, shout out to uh, shout out to everybody that came through, man. Um, Nick, man, good to see you in the chat, dude. Um, shout out to all the boys over at Pub Sports Radio. Um, shout out to uh, the usual suspects, man. Appreciate it, dude. You too. Usual suspects, Noah, Jack, the general, irregardless. Uh, Lobby Queen. Lobby Queen been showing up around here uh, 
quite a bit too, pretty consistently. So shout out to you um, and everybody else, man. If I miss anybody, I truly apologize. Um, yeah, dude, it was a good stream. It was fun. Uh, I think that's about all I got. I think that's about all I got. I don't think I missed too many people. I think I got just about everybody. And yeah, thanks for the uh, the Russian bots that came through too. Um, but yeah, man, y'all have a good evening. I'm sure I'll see y'all in the chats and uh, the streams as the week uh, goes on. Um, shout out to uh, shout out to Mo MMA. Make sure you go check out his new channel and uh, House of Mo as well. Shout out to Mister Arkansas. Looking forward to uh, Ark's next stream for sure. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens with the Mecca. Um, but uh, yeah, man, I, I'm looking forward to. Uh, to this fight card for sure, man. Got some more taping to do and uh, I'll be looking forward to that as well. But uh, y'all have a good evening, man. This has been Just My Two Cents and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace!